There he is. All right. What's going on, brother? How we doing? Just finishing up the week. Feeling good. Awesome. How, how about you? I'm I'm doing really well. This is great. It's a great week. Um, came off a great weekend of uh, of a conference uh, in Atlanta, actually. So I'm feeling refueled um, and just ready to serve. Um, so I'm super excited to have you. Uh, I want to kind of set up intention and going into it, and then I can introduce you, and then we can just hop into it. Okay. Um, so the intention uh, for this conversation, I just hope that whoever is listening now or even in the future is that whatever you may li- whatever you may hear, whatever you may gain from this, I, I just hope that it's something that will change the trajectory of your health, uh, even if it's just one thing uh, that you gain from this conversation. Um, we're only going to be talking about 30 minutes, but it's going to be raw. Uh, it's going to be authentic. Uh, it's going to be stories. And I can't. I'm really excited to hop in this story with, in this conversation with Dr. Ben here. He's actually a colleague of mine. And just reading through his story is the fact that he, he was diagnosed with autoimmune disease and the fact that he healed from it. Um, he, he didn't play victim and he actually healed from it. And now this is actually his passion and he helped other people do the same. Uh, I think that's absolutely amazing to be able to find that and actually go through that journey because now you can be that light for people that's in the dark. Um, so, Dr. Ben, I, I appreciate you, man. Uh, welcome to Healthy Humans, uh, second episode. So I'm super excited to have you, man. Well, yeah, honored to be the second one on this. So <laughs> just recommended me. I, I didn't know you too well. And yeah. uh, I'd like to be here. Awesome, brother. Um, so, man, I want to I want to kind of hear about your story. I'm very intrigued by uh, your story because I've um, – there's always people being diagnosed with, with things, right? Um, and so I think when we are diagnosed with, with something, we can identify with it and we can let that thing become us or we can take control of the situation in some form or fashion um, and be able to essentially reverse or heal because we know the body heals itself. It's, it's self-healing, self-maintaining, and self-organizing. Um, and I want to just kind of hear that story because that very that intrigued me a lot. Like, what was that journey like? Because there's probably someone watching right now that's being uh, that has a label, essentially. Sure. And um, I will also start out by saying that I never really was diagnosed, or at least not till very later on. Gotcha. Okay. Another phenomenon that happens is that people don't get diagnosed. They they're not mm. right. They're having certain symptoms: chronic fatigue, chronic pain digestive problems, whole range of other things going on. And they go to a doctor, they get examined, they maybe get some lab work and it goes, oh, you know what? We didn't find anything wrong with you or all your tests are normal. Everything's okay. And, um, and that was kind of my journey. I, uh, I wasn't always a doctor of chiropractic. I spent 10 years working in the microchip industry, just oh, my, wow. doing my own thing. And um, in my late twenties, I started getting, getting sick. And uh, it was out of nowhere. I'd really been healthy my whole life. I'd never really been overweight and uh, started developing eczema on my hands, started developing really bad digestive issues, chronic pain in my muscles that wouldn't seem to go away, um, really bad chronic fatigue and brain fog where I was just tired and out of it all the time. I had been one of the top performers at my job, my department, and it really backslid really bad. Wow. It's all about, this was about 2010, 2011, so about 10 years ago. And, um, and so eventually started going to doctors. Uh, I was hesitant at first because I was like, I, you know, like, I don't even know. I like, will just deal with it, right? But it just kept getting worse and worse. Yeah. And so basically just got the runaround. Got the like, oh, okay, you got, you know, um, digestive issues, we'll send you to the gastroenterologist. You got mm-hmm. issues, we'll send you to the dermatologist. You got you know, unexplained pain, we'll send you to the rheumatologist. And, and it's just sort of like one doctor visit exploded into like four or five. And then everyone's like referring me to the next guy. I can't figure out what's wrong with you. Let's run some more tests. And like, luckily I had insurance at the time. So it wasn't paying out. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't cost me a lot of money, but it cost gotcha. me time and a lot of yep. frustration for no, for no results, effectively no results. In fact, negative results. Cause I would get put on drugs that would mm-hmm. just side effects and wouldn't get me better. And, um, and I was on this merry-go-round for about six months. And uh, I just realized that, like, I, you know, I was just going to spin around and around and around and never get me anywhere. Yeah. 
And, uh, and so that's when I was like, okay, I, I got to figure this out on my own. Like I got to, you know, I have a science background, you know, I'm an engineer, um, yeah. some biochemistry classes at, at certain times. Like I had some sense of like, maybe I can figure this out because gotcha. I, I, I don't know. I just, I got really frustrated and I was like, and really angry with the medical system who I had trusted, right? Like I always, yeah. it worked was that you went to the doctor with, you know, symptoms and mm -hmm. oh you have you know diseases a b and c and we're gonna give you drugs x y and z and then you're all better <laughs> and, uh, you and i both know it work, right and yeah like, listen in and it doesn't always work like that and so i just started basically becoming my own doctor and mm. uh, just researching voraciously um you know reading articles watching videos watching documentaries um just like, you know, reading books, tons of books, and um, kept coming across information that said, well, you know, if you change your diet and your lifestyle, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff goes away. And I thought, oh, that's cool, but I'm not doing that. Yeah. But I just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Until I was kind of painted into a corner where I had to. And, um, and so eventually I did and uh, just started eating more fruits and vegetables, started making smoothies. To, you know, just got started real simple, just knew I needed to eat healthier. And it yeah. kind of spooned into me, you know, um, adopting a, you know, predominantly raw plant based diet. And within about six, eight weeks of doing that, like I was, you know, 90% symptom free, like everything just kind of vanished. Like I, I watched my body heal itself. I watched everything happen, you know, because it came about like, oh, the body heals itself. But experiencing it firsthand is totally, totally different, right? Yes. <laughs> now, I mean, I love that. Uh, and even the fact that you, I mean, it was grateful that you had that, I guess, had that experience uh, to be able to go and on your own, like, oh, let me be my own doctor. Um, because, I mean, most people, they don't, right? They, they just continue to be in this cycle of dysfunction, disease, sickness, and they live life this way. They live life this way. And I was going through the your your feed on Instagram. You you had posed a question. I, I mean, I absolutely I loved it. Um, and the question was, if you I'm probably I'm just paraphrasing, but pretty sure. much if if you are if you heal through or if you get your health back essentially from whatever X Y Z symptoms that you have, um, how would your life be different? Like I absolutely love that question because that's a great question to ask, right? And so I guess let me ask you that because, I mean, how has your life been different since um, being on this side of things um, with everything? Uh, th th yeah, that's a, that's a super important question to ask. I'll, I'll, say, I'll answer your question in a second, but I was going to say, like, a lot of people don't think like that. Like, they're mm. so talking about. They're so programmed with their diagnosis and told, you know, you're always going to be sick. You have, you know, whatever it is, and you're always going to take this medication for the rest of your life, and you're never going to get any better. And if anybody says that you can, you, you run away from them. As far <laughs> as, um, and so they never think about like their brain is so programmed to be sick. They'll never get well. Cause it can't even uh, be like, um, and I had no concept of what would happen. Like it was like, I was, you know, um, but around that time I hit 30 mm -hmm. and I, you know, as I got well and I just kind of realized like, I'm not happy doing this whole, like, you know, making microchips that go into TVs in Japan. Like, I really don't care. And yeah. out now, like, I'm just gonna be stuck doing this when I'm 50, you know? And, um, and so I gave some thought of like, okay, what do I, I want to do? And I was like, wow, I'd really love to be able to help people, um, you know, get well, like I did. And yeah, as you know, I saw, I didn't have a clue, like I could have four brain cells, and like, <laughs> some common sense, and I would do a better job than they did. So yeah, I'm not saying they're not smart. But like, I figured some things out that they don't know. So someone needs that, right? Yes. And I was actually going to go um, be a naturopath. But I was yeah. looking at this at the time where it isn't licensed. So I said, okay, well, I'll just go be a chiropractor and practice as a naturopath. Oh, my God. Am I so glad that I'm a <laughs> chiropractor and not a naturopath? I mean, like, personal preference, I, I am so stoked to be a chiropractor. Um. So now that's basically what I do is I'm just paying it forward. I'm out there, yeah. you know, spreading truth, spreading, inf spreading information, helping people, helping people change their lives, helping people change their health. Um, because there's a lot of sick people out there. Mm. Get better with drugs. 
So dudes like you and I got to step up because otherwise who else is going to do it, right? Yes, and that's exactly uh, why I wanted to have these conversations because uh, I'm seeing that people don't, they don't know and they're not getting this information or you getting misinformation or disinformation. Um, and I want to just be, let this be a platform for them to, to come and get some information. Again, like it could just be one thing that changed the trajectory of your life. That's all it, that's all it really takes. Um, and so what comes to mind um, with you, Doc? So I, it seemed like you're very, very, very passionate um, when it comes to uh, health freedom um what why is that what, what where does that come from uh well it comes from a couple of things um number one i went through the i went through the belly of the beast and the worst of the worst with the medical system so i know that they don't have all the answers can they do something yeah. really well uh, of course you know my arm gets ripped off i'm not going to pour green surgery <laughs> could be attacked but they they, they they drop ball a lot you know um but like we don't have to get into details but yeah if we were going to them for everything, we'd, we'd be in trouble. So I'm a real big fan of choice and letting people make their own medical decisions just because like, if I didn't have that choice, if I didn't have the choice to opt out, if I didn't have the choice to like, get off the drugs they were giving me that were making me worse and figure it out on my own, like, I would be maybe dead. I don't know, I would have been very unhappy. Um, so, so I'm a big believer in choice. Um, yeah. And also because, you know, uh, doctors, including you and I, aren't always right about everything. Um, and then another thing was that when I started researching autoimmunity, which I later found out that's what I had, I mm -hmm. uh, kept bumping into this inconvenient truth that um, a lot of um, autoimmune diseases are actually precipitated by vaccines. And it's actually like I found it in the scientific literature. And in the beginning, I would stumble across it and be like, oh, that's an anomaly. That's like a one-off kind of thing. But I just kept coming across it. It's yeah. Like, okay. So... Then I became, you know, and I was realizing, like, okay, autoimmune um, vaccines are contributing to autoimmune disease. Let me investigate this more. And that's where I really came into the medical freedom community. And I was like, whoa, mm. you know, get this message going. So when COVID and all that hit, I mean, I knew it was, it was a, it was a, you know, a scam essentially from the beginning. Like it, it was a ruse um, to uh, exert uh, for the medical industry to, you know, exert its will upon us. Um, so. I knew I had to speak up and I knew that if we just, you know, said, Oh, well, let's let them do their thing. Right. That, that, that we, we, we would, you know, it ruin our lives. So it really became time to stand up. Gotcha. Um, I'm with you a hundred percent on that. Um, same, same here. Likewise, um, freedom is one of my core values. And um, anytime that something goes against that or I try to like impinge on my freedom, then it doesn't feel good. And I definitely, I speak up. Um, and I think that's, again, it's, it's choice, right? So we, it's about uh, mind, body, sovereignty, uh, autonomy, and this is our bodies, right? Um, and we should have, be able to have a choice uh, when it comes to it. And so um, what comes up when you were just, just kind of talking about it? And, and I, that's something that I've been talking with a few, a few docs about when, with when it comes to the jab vaccines, when... It comes to that and like i've been seeing some weird things in the office it's just it's just been weird like i don't i don't really know what to think of it but it's been it's been pretty consistent um and i'm not saying it's from that but that's the only thing that has changed and i'm curious and like what does that look like when we're talking about autoimmune diseases in the future or to come All right have you have you gave that thought any thought after doing that research um, I mean, you know, if we look at the amount of, you know, if we look at, you know, how autoimmunity used to be a one in 10,000 thing, right? Like, yeah. like autism and it's skyrocketed and now it's one in seven, right? I mean, yeah. Depending on what numbers you look at. Um, and so we know that when we give these drugs, they're specifically designed to alter the immune system, right? A vaccine it alters the immune system and it tries to, it attempts to enhance it, right? But we also know that drugs by their nature have side effects that's just that's just the way it works every drug yeah. is effects. and so when you have a drug you're trying to uh, you know manipulate the immune system you're gonna have side effects on on the immune system um so i think you know these new things which i really don't like to call them vaccines right like they're experimental gene therapies 
um, there's a good potential that they could cause autoimmune disease. And we won't know for maybe seven years sometime. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it could be coming. It, but we don't know because we haven't done the research, right? Like the, the clinical trials don't even conclude till 2023. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> and this idea that, oh, you'll see all the side effects in the first week or something. It's just, it's, it's absurdity. It's absolute. <laughs> uh, so, so it's coming, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'd like to head it off at the pass and, you know, let, you know, <laughs> you know before it gets too bad, because I'm only one person, yep. right? Like I can only help so many people at a time. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I, I'm scared it's going to get worse. I'm working my butt off to try to, you know, try to get the message out. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think to answer your question, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that was my that was my kind of my my fear of that too. Um, so I'm curious. So, what does it look like when you um, when you're helping people through this this when they have these autoimmune diseases or these things that maybe someone told them that oh, like you this is something you have to deal with the rest of your life um, and like dealing with that because a lot of people are again we we talk about being in that cycle. Um, and like mentally being in that cycle and like if you if mentally if you're sick like you're going to be sick physically too so i mean how is that working with with your your patients and helping them through this cycle and breaking that mentally so they can be able to see that change and experience the healing that you experience sure good question um and, and i think yeah the mental is much as important as physical and one thing i do when i begin to work with people i'm like Let's paint a picture of what your life could be like if you mm. tell. Like, what are the things that you're not able to do right now or you've always wanted to do but you can't because of your condition? And that's, that's tough for people because a lot of times, like you said, they're programmed to just believe they're going to be sick. Yeah. yeah. But even when we're going through this process, they're like, wow, this is, like, so valuable just to even, like, entertain these ideas. Um, so we get a clear picture of, like, where they want to be and, and what they want to get with their health and – you know, when they have more energy, when they're in less pain, when they're feeling better, like, what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. And so we, we get clear on that. And then I basically coach them. I have a group coaching program. Okay. Uh, and we just, we, I put them on a um, all raw or high raw plant-based diet. So tons of fruit, tons of leafy greens, uh, just like in season stuff that grows off of a tree and out of the ground. And, um, and, you know, we, we give them the support and the motivation, the inspiration to stick with it because it's definitely not easy to make radical changes like that. And, and we see crazy things happen. We see people reverse disease, see people's yeah. lab numbers all normalize. You see, um, you know, I, I have a lady right now who's um, got optic neuritis because of MS, yeah. which um, she's been blind for 13 years. Her vision's starting to come back, which just blows my mind. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And I mean, I mean, you would like, we would call these things like miracles, right? Um, but if we really think about, it, I mean, this is this is the way, this is the power of the body, right? The the healing mechanism that it, that it has, and what we were what we were like born with, and the, the way it was designed. Um, I think it's really cool when we talk about foods, right? Um, and like, I feel like everything on this planet is put here for a reason, and it's here for us to be able to um, to live with and cohesive with. Um, and we were talking about foods, so how, well, how, I feel like how do we get so far away from, away from like these foods and um, these whole foods, like fruits, vegetables, just these one, one ingredient things. Like, what do you think the reason why we gotten so way away from that? And we like, it's like, we, I don't know, we make it difficult. We make it complicated. Yep. And I think it's, I think it's simple, right? Not easy, but it's simple. I agree with you hundred percent. And I think at some point, we just decided that we could improve upon nature and that we could do better than nature. And that, you know, wh wh whether you want to look at it as creation, God's creation, or you want to look at it as three and a half billion years of evolution and data. Yeah. Um, we're not smarter than either of those things. Like, <laughs> but we like to think that we are. Um, and so, so that's part of the problem. And then we just have this problem where we're focused on disease, right? We're fighting disease. You know, we're a, we're a cancer warrior, we're an autoimmune warrior, we're, you know, we're fighting, we're fighting with a fight for the cure. And no one's focused on health. It's like, mm. and we can see it now with COVID. I mean, it's out of control. It's like, 
the people, they have their mask and then they pull it down to smoke the cigarette and they got their Wendy's bag and they're like, I'm safe, you know, I'm wearing my mask and I got my injection. So I'm going to be okay. I can eat Wendy's and smoke cigarettes and, you know, <laughs> have all these unhealthy habits because we were just disconnected. We think that like, we can just, you know, insert in the body a few different toxins and then manipulate this, you know, this vastly complex immune system. I mean, yeah. it, it's hubris. And um, there's no money to be made. I mean, like, okay, I make money doing this, right? But I don't sell people mangoes, right? Like, I make my money um, coaching them and inspiring them and holding them accountable and getting them in. Yes. Um, but there's no third party investor that can come in and get a piece of Dr. Ben, right? But a third party investor can, can um, you know, make money off of an injection, make money off of a pill, make money off of an infusion, make money off of a hospital bill, somebody putting being put on a ventilator. So unfortunately, capitalism, you know, it's, it's got its, you know, strengths and its weaknesses, but it really incentivizes this system that's all about that's for profit and does not look at health, unfortunately. Yeah, 100% um, that I'm with you, man. Um, and, and that's what I've seen, uh, unfortunately. And again, that's why I want to be able to empower people through through health, because I feel like as as doctors of whatever doctor you are, I mean, doctor means to teach. Uh, and to educate. And that's exactly what we need to be doing, educating, teaching, and empowering the individuals that we come in contact with um, so that they can do the same for other people around them, right? Uh, and that's how you create this this ripple effect. Um, so we know that this this journey, it's like this health journey, essentially. It's, it's a journey. It's not, obviously, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And so it's, it's taking one step at a time, right? Because so, for instance, like yesterday, um, and it just, it just hit me as like I was able to reflect on it. Like yesterday, my wife get she bought some figs, and like this is my first time having a real fig. And I'm talking, about, I'm not talking about the Newton's fig, not, like an actual fig. Like so, and when I talk about this, you know, I had a chance to reflect on. I'm like, man, like my first time having a fig. Like this is wild. And like so, my my kids, um, one is eight months old and one is three years old. Have eleven year old, but. The thing is, they had figs, they had avocados, like they have these things because I'm in a place where I'm like, oh, I know better, right? So now I can change the trajectory of where they start in their health, right? Um, so I think that's really powerful. And that was a big awakening for me that happened yesterday. Um, and just the fact that this is a journey, like it, it, it doesn't stop. And so one step of the way. So if there was one step that you can give someone that will change the trajectory of their life like what would that one thing be that could that could do that for them well there's lots of them i'd say um i'd say whatever you're doing for breakfast have fruit for breakfast instead um and whatever's in season right now so like um you know this morning i just ate watermelon for breakfast i had a whole half of a watermelon um real simple easy to do tastes great gives you energy and mm -hmm. So it's one of the healthiest foods you can eat. So that's that's my one thing. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, the melons are in season, and I've been trying several melons this this season, um, and they've been delicious. <laughs> um, but man, so how can people contact you, find you, um, see your work, uh, see what you're doing? Uh, where can they find you at? Sure. Uh, so I'm, it's my name on pretty much everything, Doctor Bench. I know it's really. Long. Hard to spell, but it's that on Instagram, <laughs> on YouTube, and Facebook. You know, on these platforms, as long as they'll keep me, I, I'm sure we're all eventually going to get the boot. And then drbenjaminulis.com is my website. Um, so any of those. Uh, Instagram, I'm the most active on, so follow me here. If you have questions, I saw there were a ton of comments in the chat. We didn't really get to answer all the questions. So if you want to know things, just send me a DM. I'm very responsive on that. I'd love to talk to you. Um, and uh, that's that's the best way to reach me. Gotcha. Guys, you can just go to, it should be go be able to go to the top of the screen and be able to find Dr. Ben and you can follow Dr. Ben. Because someone told, someone said, spell it. There we go. <laughs> so I think they should be able to find you at the top here. Okay. I'll just comment my name so they'll see me. Yeah. And then, yeah, find me. There we go. Someone just put you there. Cool, buddy. Then, <laughs> but no one ever spelled it. How do you spell it? Uh, B -E the last name? L I N. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah. <laughs> no one's spelling it right, no one's pronouncing it. <laughs> or, you know, or something. I don't know. I got you. Man, um, I know we only scratched the surface um, of this, but I, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the connection. I uh, look forward to connecting uh, in the future. And, I mean, continue doing what you're doing. Continue contributing. I feel like we are all here to contribute in some way, some form of fashion, uh, so that humanity can t continue to evolve, continue to grow, uh, and continue to live on as we, as we come and go through this uh, life. And so continue to contribute, brother. I uh, appreciate you, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, following your journey. Oh, yeah, I appreciate you for having me on. Definitely let me know as you're working on projects, if there's anything I can help you out with or help promote. Like, I'm happy to help in any way. Awesome. Brother, I appreciate you. Have a great night, okay? All right, you too. Thank you. All right, see you.